Keep your garments. One of the big goals of the devil in these last days is to see you naked. He achieves this by taking your garments from you. The instruction of the Lord is very clear and loud. Blessed is he that keepeth his garments. What are the garments you should keep? When did you receive them? That is what we're talking about today, and we are starting right now. One day, the Lord Jesus gave a parable of a wedding feast, and those who were invited had to come on a wedding garments. Matthew 22, verse 9 to 11. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was finished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. This parable is an end-time parable. In other words, it speaks of the days we are living in right now. The second thing we see is that it is a wedding feast, and the Lord has invited his guest. Does the Lord have guests? Zephaniah 1 verse 7. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He hath bid his guest. That means he has invited his guest. The phrase hold thy peace means be silent. God was saying, shh, hold your tongue because the guests of the Lord have just arrived. Who are the guests of the Lord? Before we answer that question, let's first define the word guest. A guest is a person who is invited to visit someone, to visit someone's home or attend a particular social occasion. Oh, I love that. A guest is someone who has his own domicile, but he is invited for a special occasion. God Almighty is the one who has a special occasion, but the special occasion to be complete, he needs special guests. But remember, according to Zephaniah, when God's guests arrive, there must be silence in God's presence. Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. One, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. When you see silence in heaven, it means rapture. The guests of the Lord have just arrived in heaven for the marriage feast. But they must all have garments or wedding garments. If you don't have a wedding garment, what happens to you? I say this because of those people who like to say, I didn't have a wedding garment, but by the mercies and the graces of God, I attended, I attended the wedding. Matthew 22, verse 12 to 13. And he saith unto him, Friend, we continue with that parable. And he saith unto him, Friend, how comest thou in thither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's the Lord's mercy for you. It will be a special occasion indeed, when all the invited guests are celebrating together with the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation 19 verse 9. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called or invited unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Hallelujah. When the church is raptured, she will go to heaven for, for marriage supper of the Lamb, and she will come back to the earth. Why? Because she is a guest in heaven. But the earth is her domicile. Do you understand that? Sometimes we have people who say, I am going home. In heaven, you are only a guest. That means you will be there for a short period of time. Anyway, we saw that no one will go to the feast of the Lord without a garment. There is therefore a need to be to keep your garments. Do you understand that? Revelation 16 verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garment, lest he walk naked. And, and they shall see his shame. It is possible to walk naked. Did you see that? 
The Lord Jesus made a statement which reveals some powerful things for us. He says, Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth. That blessing is connected to his coming, meaning that the Lord is directly talking about the last days. The last days, the days before he comes back. Those who should keep their garments are those who are living in the last days. In other words, the garments have been given to the saints of the last days. Understand that when he says that we, we should keep our garments, he's letting us know that it is possible to lose our garments. Even the verse confirms it by saying, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Revelation 3 verse 4. Thou has a few names. Here he was talking to the seven churches of Revelation. One of them is the church, the church in Sardis. He says, Thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Hallelujah. He is bringing another layer. It is also possible to defile your garment. I hope you saw that. If your, gar your garment is defiled, you will be denied access at the wedding feast. That is the reason you should hold tight your garments. The devil is after your garments and he wants to see you naked. What is it about your garments anyway? Your garment is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget that when you got born again, you were given the garments of salvation. Where in the Bible does it talk about the garments of salvation? Isaiah 61 verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of, of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with the jewels. The children of God were clothed with the garments of salvation, also known as the robes of righteousness. You get your garments the day you receive Christ into your heart. These garments are the ones which qualify you to be a priest. Revelation 1 verse 5 to 6. And from Jesus, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, hallelujah, unto him that loved us, glory to God, and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now I get it. No wonder the Bible says we are royal priesthood, a holy nation. It is because we have received garments of salvation, robes of righteousness. All priests have garments. If you don't have garments, then you are not a priest and you will not be allowed at the wedding feast of the Lord. I said the devil is after your garments. It just means he is after your salvation. When we talk about the garments of salvation, we are also talking about the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ, which you should keep until the end. A video is coming to cover that part. Then we are talking about the oil which keeps your lamp burning until he comes back. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. Let your garments be always white and let your thine head lack no ointment. That's the oil. Remember those in Sardis who defiled their garments? It is because they, did, they didn't keep their garments white as the Ecclesiastes is telling us. Child of God, make sure to have enough oil for your lamp. The garments, the oil, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, the series of this teaching, more is still coming. Until next time, this is Bishop Judah, dissolving doubt and explaining of hard sentences through the word of God. God bless you.